Now behind me is a 2007 Toyota Crown Majesta. These are an incredibly cool car from Japan, packed full of luxury features, big V8 under here, and these are cheap. Today I'm gonna to explain to you why if you can import these, you should, because the value, the luxury, we're gonna find out. Today we're gonna to be reviewing this S180 Toyota Crown Majesta. We're gonna go get it out on the road, check out its interior, and of course we will launch this car. So make sure you stick around and let's get into it. Now driving this S180 Toyota Crown Majesta and I gotta tell you guys, it is bliss. This thing, the fact it's got a 4.3 liter NAV8 up front, makes about 280-ish horsepower, and about 317 pound-foot of torque, it's so smooth. It's effortless power, and the tune that Toyota has done is amazing. It, it is pure class, this car, and even just going from the traffic lights, this thing just feels so effortless and you're just pulling away from everyone. You don't really hear this engine, you know, unless you really flat foot this car. It's very quiet. The, the ride is very smooth. You know, you gotta remember, this thing is from 2007, you know, it's like 15 year old car and it feels very nice out on these rougher back roads. It, it just soaks up the road very well. You do hear a little bit of road noise but besides that, it's beautiful in here. Now this does have a six speed automatic and that was the only transmission available for the Majesta. And just like its engine, it is smooth. And if you're just cruising, you know, you're listening to some music, you can't even feel this thing change gears. It is that good. Um, yeah. they. They just nailed it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it, like this thing is beautiful and I'm trying to wrap my brain around how old this thing is and how smooth and nice everything still is. Uh, you can tell this thing is an older car just by looking at the infotainment system and stuff, but from the drive, it is really impressive. And we're just coming into some tighter hairpins around here and you know, it, it's not even really that boaty. You know, this is a big car. You do get a little bit of feel through it though, which is nice, coming around this big one. You get onto it a little bit more. We're over a hundred, like we, and that was literally 25% throttle. It, it is really savage. I, I absolutely am in love with this thing. And the, the fact these are so cheap and affordable it's, it's a win-win. This car has some great features, you know, it's got a heads-up display. It does have push button starts, keyless entry. We've got pretty much everything is automatic. You know, you've got folding mirrors, all your seat controls are electric. You've got the infotainment system. A lot of it is Japanese, so you can't use a lot of it now, but if you knew how to speak Japanese or you got it converted, it, it's still pretty nice. You've got all of your climate control vents here. You, this thing had TV back, you know. In Japan, you can watch TV when you drive. It's pretty cool. If you put a free view box in the trunk, I guarantee you could hook this thing up. This does have air suspension, so we can actually put it in a sport mode, stiffen it up. We can raise the height. You know, if we're going over, maybe it's a steep car park we're going into or something, we can raise that up so we don't scratch the middle of this car. We've got automatic sunshades for the rear. You've got manual ones for the back passengers. This was really impressive for, you know, we're talking mid 2000s here, and we've got this level of, you know, driver's assist, electric features, the heads up display again, like this thing even has a little help button. You know, obviously it's only suited for Japan, I think, but you know, you can flick this thing down, press it, and that would, you know, call emergency services if you broke down. It's fully kitted out. Now, if you have been enjoying this S180 Majesta review, please consider hitting that big red subscribe button and clicking the bell notification so you do get updated on all our weekly uploads where we do feature 
a lot of cool JDM content and a lot of weird Aussie stuff. So you want to see some interesting cars, consider hitting that subscribe button. Now these first came out in 2004 and they were carried through up until 2009. That is when the S200 Majesta came out and I have previously reviewed one of those as well. So if you guys would like to see that, just go ahead and click out on the pop-up banner here. They are an amazing car as well and that was the last one to feature the big V8. Now brand new, back in Japan, in the mid 2000s, you're gonna buy one of these. You're gonna pay about five and a half million Japanese yen. And you translate that to Australian dollars, you're talking about 65,000 bucks. And the fact that now you can pick one of these up in Japan at an auction for like eight to nine grand, it's ridiculous. And here in Australia, the average going price is kind of sitting around that 15 to 20 with actually quite a few of them around that 15 mark. And this particular one is for sale at Vans West. A link for it is in the description below, guys, if you want to check it out. It's beautiful, and I'm not going to lie, I am actually thinking about buying this thing because it is wicked. These cars are so cool. Now, one really cool thing that I would love to see in person is that Toyota actually came out with this car and they did have an option to give it a supercharger. So you could have bought one of these supercharged from factory and it would have been pushing about an extra 50 horsepower. Those would be a highly rare option, I am sure, but to see a supercharged Crown Majesta, that is goals, I'm gonna tell you that right now. There were a few other models you could have bought. So this being the Majesta, this was kind of the top trim level for the Crown. You could have gone back down to a Athlete, which dropped the V8 for a V6, though they did consider that one to be kind of the more sporty version. And they did give it slightly different front and rear bumpers. So it does have kind of a unique look to it. And I always find this fact really interesting that this is actually Toyota's longest running nameplate passenger vehicle they have. This thing has been in production since 1955 and they're currently on their 14th generation of the Toyota Crown. It's still being made today guys and it's a beautiful car. It really is. A lot of the Japanese, at least the older Japanese, are very patriotic and they do not want foreign vehicles. They want to be in Japanese made, Japanese pure vehicles and the Toyota Crown is the one of choice and especially the Majesta. Now fuel economy, look, this does have a V8 up front. It is gonna drink, I believe from Toyota, it was claimed at around that 10, 11 liters per 100 Ks. And that's basically what we are achieving. On the highway, you know, you can get this thing as low as, you know, that six liters per 100 Ks. I can see it here. But if you're gonna drive anything spiritedly, you know, you're well and truly gonna get into the 15, 20 liters per 100 Ks territory. Yep, there's just something about JDM luxury saloons that gets me every time. And they are just so cool. They really are. This, this vehicle, it's got that nostalgic feel to it because you know, it is getting older. It's almost 15 years old now will be eligible to import to Canada, any Canadians watching. It just feels so ahead of its time. Like, I, I, I really want to get into a brand new crown. I know they are not eligible to import here in Australia yet, the brand new ones, but I just, oh, I want to get in one. I know they dropped the V8, it's now a V6 hybrid, but these are just so nice. And the Toyota Crown, has always been a fan favorite of mine. It really has. Now, let us pull over here because I wanna show you guys the back seats and that's kinda actually where you really wanna be. Now, in the back, this is actually where you wanna sit. This is where the VIPs would sit and this is kinda like a chauffeur car. I'm not gonna lie, it's nice to be up the front but this is actually where the VIP people will sit. You got a lot of luxury controls back here and it is nice. 
Very similar to that Toyota Century I reviewed with the big V12. If you guys wanna see that video, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. We actually have a little drop down passage here and <laughs> I can put my legs through the front and there's a little button on the side here where I can control the front seat and just like the Century, I'm just relaxed now. We've got a drop down center arm stack here which gives you a flurry of control. So we've got heated seats, we've actually got a massaging function here and uh, it's very, very nice. You've got a reclining feature, so I can actually recline this back just to get a little bit more comfortable. And I feel like a king right now, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we've even got little window shades here, we can do that. There's a button here for the rear, so if I wanna put that shade up, I can just do that with the touch of a button. We've got our radio controls down here, so I can control what I wanna listen to. I've got a little reading light up here, which is nice. My own little vent because we do have our own climate control back here. So I've got my own climate control buttons for the rear with an air purifier. And <laughs> yeah, it's that level. You've got a little storage cubby in here. You've got a 12 volt socket. So if I wanted to charge something, I can do that. And the best part of all, back here, if I drop this down, I have got a cooler box. So if I've got a nice can of Coke or whatever I want to put back there, it's cold. Very nice, it's, it's really amazing. This is Uber Black on steroids, guys. So yeah, if you do Uber for a living, I recommend you buy one of these. I think your, uh, your reviews are gonna go through the roof because this is very, very nice. Now, just putting it into the power mode setting, we're putting it into sports mode for the suspension. Chuck it into sport drive, and let's go around this corner here. Oh, geez. <laughs> this thing was actually spinning its wheels. Oh my goodness, that is hilarious. It is a wet day today, so that doesn't surprise me, but. It's fast. It, it is actually fast and uh, we are about to launch this thing. We're gonna do the zero to 100. Put your guess in right now. What do you guys think it's gonna be? This is gonna be fairly quick, I think. I gotta give it to these crowns. I think they're gonna surprise a lot of people here. Now, zero to 100, I am actually not sure what this Majesta will get. The previous S200 I have reviewed, that got about 5.8 seconds, zero to 100, so. Look, we're out on this, it's very wet country road, so I am not sure what this is actually going to get. We're gonna reset our draggy here. Still in power mode, still in sport suspension, but we will do traction control on now, and three, two. Oh, it struggled. One hundred. <laughs> It, it still struggled, and remember, it's a very wet road today, so we're not giving it its best chance, unfortunately. Uh, let's have a look at what this time was. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour there was 7.1 seconds, and you know, look, considering this thing isn't a performance car, it's a luxury car, that's not a half bad time, considering the age of it as well. You know, my F6 Typhoon on a dry day got 6.1. This is getting 7.1. It's a wet day. This thing is heavy and it ain't a performance car. So that's, that's pretty damn good. I gotta give it to it. So wrapping up the S180 Toyota Crown Majesta is an amazing vehicle in almost every way. Yes, it's not an unbelievably quick or sporty car, but it still delivers enough grunt to most importantly, put that smile on your face. The amazing ride quality, the Japanese quirks, and the insane amount of features truly places this car as one of the best from the mid 2000s. Yet even in 2021, I'm utterly impressed. Toyota reliability, Majesta build quality, and for the money, all I can say is this car has it all.
Thanks for watching.